All right, guys, I got a quick deck profile for you all here. I'm doing a uh, Gunkin deck profile. I'm actually a big fan of this deck. It's been a lot of fun. I really like uh, rank four toolbox decks. I feel like this deck is mildly competitive at best. I don't think you're going to be seeing this outside of gold. And given that it has a absolutely terrible uh, flow under matchup, uh, if you play against that deck, you're probably going to lose. But if you're looking for something just to fudge around with, uh, it can be a lot of fun. And when it opens right, it can do some cool stuff. Um, originally, I was running uh, the Pot of Prosperity, but I switched from that over to Painful Decision. Because uh, if you run the Pot of Prosperity or um, any of the pots that don't let you draw after resolving them, uh, you won't get the draw effect from your Gunkins. So just be aware of that. And we're going to go ahead and get into it. So first we have three Gunkin Sunship Sorry. This is uh, the vanilla monster that the deck depends on. It does kind of stink you have to run a vanilla, but we do make the most out of it. We have two Max C, which uh, I'm actually thinking about cutting to maybe one just because flow is so prevalent in the meta right now and you don't get uh to resolve maxi off the flow next we have two ash blossom and joy springs this card is still good and this card has been really helpful um actually think that might be a little bit better uh but in the replays i am running two maxi Next we have the two Rescue Rabbit. Uh, Rescue Rabbit is kind of a blast to pass for me when this card came out in TCG. It was like an $80 secret rare. Uh, the fact that we get to use it now is pretty awesome. It can be special summoned from the deck. You can banish this card you control to special summon two level four lower normal monsters with the same name from your deck, but destroy them during the end phase. You can only use this effect to Rescue Rabbit once per turn. So play Rabbit. Uh, tribute the rabbit, well, banish the rabbit rather, and uh, get the Gunkin Sunship Saris on the field. Uh, the other thing is, if you're trying to push damage, you can just attack with the two Gunkin Sunships and then XYZ during your main phase too. Uh, but Rescue Rabbit is really good for turboing them out. Mm -hmm. And I know you're saying, well, you're running two rabbits, what happens if uh, these are already in the grave or something? Well, you got Pot of Avarice for that. Um, some people are running two Pot of Avarice. I'm running one because I found two to be really bricky. Uh, three Gunkin Sunship Kakuras. If you control the vanilla, the Sunship Shari, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon it once per turn this way. And then during your main phase, you can activate the top three cards of your deck. And if you do, you can add to your hand or special summon another Sunship. Also, Shuffle the rest into your deck. You can only use this effect once per turn. So typically for this effect, the move is to play the field spell, which you'll normal summon the uh, Shari, and then you can place a Gunkin card on top of your deck. And then you'll use the Shari effect to special summon it. So you can go bam, uh, bam, bam, and you're good. Next we have Gunkin Sun Sioux Ship. Shiro. If you control a Gunkin Sunship Shari or XYZ monster that has a Gunkin Sunship Shari as material, you can special summon this card from your hand. During your main phase, you can special summon one Gunkin monster from your hand except Sunship Shiro. Then you can take any number of Gunkin Sunship Shari from your deck or graveyard and place them on top of the deck in any order, which is awesome, by the way, because that also can combo with this guy. And then next we have Gunkin Suship Uni or Uni. You can only you can reveal one other Gunkin card in your hand, special summon it from your hand, and apply the following effects based on the revealed card. If the revealed card is the Shari, uh, you can special summon the revealed monster. If the revealed card is anything else, it goes on the bottom of the deck. You can target one Gunkin monster you control, change it to level four or five, then add one Gunkin Suship Shari from your deck to your hand. So the fact that uh, 
it lets you just get another one of these is really great. Um, if the card wasn't that, it gets placed on the bottom of the deck. Uh, you can target one Gunkin monster you control, change its level from 4 to 5, then you can add the Gunkin Sunship, so that's perfect. You can only use each effect once per turn. Um, the level 5 XYZ for them is actually pretty good, and we'll get into that in a bit. We do have to max out on copies of each of them because it is a combo heavy deck for something that is relatively simple. You just really need the three copies of each for consistency. Next we have one Regeki, one Feather Duster, one Upstart Goblin, one Terraforming, one Pot of Avarice, and this is great because you can use it to recycle your uh, Sunships in the Grave. And then three Unexpected Die because sometimes we really need to open with the Sunship on the board. And uh, being able to just pull up from deck is really great. Even if you have like that and Rabbit, you can just go, okay, Unexpected Die, Shari, and then Rabbit. And then you got three of these guys on the field and you can do shenanigans. Uh, painful Decision. You can send a level four lower normal monster from your deck to the grave. Add a monster with the same name from your deck to your hand. You can only activate one Painful Decision per turn. So send one Shari to the grave, get a Shari to hand. Sometimes you need it as a starter. And then one Gunkin Sunship Seaside Supper Spot. So this card's pretty good. Once per turn, if you normal or special summon a Gunkin monster, even during the damage step, you can place one Gunkin card from the top of your deck. Sorry, uh, from your deck on the top of your deck. So once again, that's the one we used to combo with Aruka. And then once per turn, if a face-up Gunkin monster you control that was special from the extra deck is sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card. Activate this effect. Your opponent pays life points equal to that monster's defense in the graveyard. Then you can apply this effect. Special summon a Gunkin Shari from your hand. Then special summon an XYZ monster from your extra deck. Using that monster you control as material, this is treated as an XYZ summon. Next we have two Evenlies. Uh, sometimes if we're going second, we need this card. It's just how it is with this format right now. Um... Two infinite imperm negating effects is good if you have the ur gems to spend i would advise uh putting uh two effect failures in this deck as well and taking out the upstart and a painful decision um i just personally didn't want to commit those gems to Valor for a deck that i'm going to be playing casually but if you are trying to be more serious about it i would advise making those changes Next, we have two Gunkin Suship Daily Special. You, when you activate this card, you can also reveal one Sunship Sar in your hand, reveal three Gunkin monsters from your deck. Your opponent chooses one of them for you to add to your hand and shuffle the rest into the deck. If you reveal the Sunship Shari in your hand, you can choose the card to add to your hand instead of your opponent choosing. If this card is in your graveyard, accept the turn it was sent there. Banish this card, target three Gunkin monsters in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck and draw a card. Once again, this is good for recycling the Shari and has more effects than just the Pot of Avarice effect. Uh, it is, however, a little slower where Avarice can help you uh, turn one if you need it. And next, finally, we have two Solemn Judgment because we don't want to get blown out by our opponent. Who knows what they're going to play on us, but we don't want to get Lightning Stormed or Rejected or any of that. And finally, we're going to go to the extra deck. There is another version of this where you can run Utopia Double, by the way, and run Double or Nothing in the main deck and do Utopia shenanigans. So if you do feel like putting that package in there, you could. But first off, we have Utopia. It's pretty much just a sponge and attack. Next, we have Gaga Cowboy, in case our opponent is 800 and we need to go for game. Next, we have Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. We've went over him in uh, past deck profiles, but for those who've forgotten, once per chain during your main phase or opponent's battle phase. If your opponent has a total more cards in hand on the field than you do, you can detach one material from this card, destroy all other cards in the field, and your opponent takes no further damage this turn. This is a quick effect, and you can use it during your opponent's battle phase or your main phase. Next, we have Rhapsody and Berserk. You can target one face of XYZ monster you control. Equip this monster you control to that target. It gains 1200 attack. You can detach one XYZ material from this card. Target one card in your opponent's graveyard. Banish that target. You can only use this effect number 80 up to twice per turn. 
Uh, I use that effect a fair amount to remove uh, DPE. So any problem card in my opponent's graveyard, I can take care of it with Rhapsody, and then I can attach him to a Gunkin to give it attack power. I haven't seen a lot of people running this in the deck, and I feel like it's overlooked. Next, we have Crooked Cook. While you control no other cards in the field, unaffected by uh, other card effects, you can use it to stall once per turn. You can detach one material from this card and destroy as many other cards as possible, and it gains 300 attack until the end of the turn for each monster destroyed by this effect sent to the graveyard. Uh, next, we have one number 60, Jurgis the Timeless. You can detach two materials, activate one of the following effects. You can skip your next draw phase and draw two, and then discard a card, or skip your next main phase and summon one monster from your graveyard to defense, or skip your next battle phase and double the attack one monster you control until the end of the turn. You can only use this effect number 60 once per turn. And then next we have the Gunkin Suship Aruka class Dreadnoughts. Uh, and I'm running three of it just because I have the space. If this card is XYZ summoned, you can apply these effects in sequence based on the materials used. You can only use the effect of Gunkin uh, Ruka class Dreadnought once per turn. Um, so if you would have the Shari on it, you draw a card when it's summoned. And if you had the Aruka on it, then it can make a second attack during each battle phase. And once per turn, when your Gunkin Monster Special Summon from the extra deck inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. Next, we have Magic Key Spirit, the Partu. This card is XYZ Summoned. You can detach a material, add a level 4 or higher normal monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. If this card is a normal monster as material at the start of the damage step, if it battles an opponent's monster with the same attribute as a normal monster or Magic Key Monster in your graveyard, you can detach one material from this card. Your opponent must send that monster to the graveyard. So this is pretty useful because um, if you have another one in the grave, you can do water. But if you have uh, as a normal monster or a magic key monster in the graveyard, you can also do uh, fire. So pretty much fire and water are susceptible to that, which is pretty cool. Um, and then next we have Gunkin Sushi Plus Shiro Class Carrier, which is for use with this one. Uh, so when it's XYZ summoned, you apply the effects in sequence. You can only use the effect Gunkin Sunship Shiro Class Carrier once per turn. When it, all of them, basically, when they have the ship on it, you draw a card, the vanilla ship. And then when it has this guy on it, you can add a uh, Gunkin Speller Trap from your deck to your hand. While well, face of cards in the field zone, Gunkin monsters you control special from, summon from the extra deck cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects and gain attack equal to their defense, which is pretty cool because that makes uh, this guy 25 and that makes this guy uh, 2450 and that makes the big one 34, which is pretty, pretty beefy. Bringing us to the big one, Gunkin Sunship Uni Class Super Dreadnought. Which I actually think I might uh, make another one of instead of running three of those guys. But uh, this dude's pretty good. Uh, his effects are if he has the Shari, you draw a card. And then the other one is he gains the ta ability to attack directly if he has the Uni uh, as one of his materials, which is pretty great. So once per turn during your opponent's main phase or battle phase. You can target base of cards your opponent controls up to the number of Gunkin monsters. You control special summon from the extra deck and you can negate their effects. Also a pretty decent effect. And then to round it out, we have Zeus. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a replay that I have for this deck real quick. Uh, this deck is a lot of fun. Not super competitive, but it is a lot of fun. So we're just gonna go ahead and get into the replay. We open the two unexpected dies, which is a little bricky, but we're going to get around it. So we go ahead and play it. We get the ship. We play the other ship. I mistimed the effect because I'm a goober. Um, we go ahead and go into the uh, level four. 
So we're going to get our draw. And they're going to end permit so we don't get the draw. And so at this point I'm just like, oh, I probably lose. But we're just going to go ahead and deal with it. And we're playing Flunder, which of course is not a good matchup for us. So they summon the bird, and they want to do the bird effect, and I say, okay, sure, get the bird, summon the other bird, and we say no. No birds allowed. And so now it's our turn, and it's not looking super great, but I'm just going to attack. I'm going to use the effect and blow up a back row, and I'm going to pass. We have the useless maxi in hand, which is useless because we're playing against flow, which is why I cut it to one during the deck profile, because running two is bad. We play the field spell, we summon the ship, we put the dude on top that we're going to use next turn, and we blow up the back row and attack for 2,000. Now, my opponent doesn't have anything in hand, really, so at that point, they're just going to scoop, so we got kind of lucky there. But uh, that is the deck doing things. I'm not even doing things optimally because uh, I made a couple of misplays there. But... That's the deck in a nutshell. I hope you guys like it. If you want more uh, deck profiles or more Yu-Gi-Oh content, leave a comment down below or like the video. Dislike the video if you dislike it. And if you want more content, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, this video is sponsored by W Energy. Uh, you can use the link below and use code SirLargeGaming to get 10% off. I personally like the mango peach flavor. I think they're sold out of that right now. But the uh, Pink Lemonade Dragon Fruit is a close second. I like it a lot more than getting canned energy drinks from the store because they taste better, they give me more energy, and it also comes out to being a little bit cheaper. Uh, but yeah, that's it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.